Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. It is Christmas in July. We are talking about the different specialties on this special weekend edition. We are up to the gastroenterology <laughs> specialty. Okay, so if you're brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. I have been a medical coder for over 10 years. I really love sharing the things that I know with all of you. So I hope you'll take a second, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and at the end of this video helps you, I hope that you'll share it. Okay, so let's get started, all right. So I'm going to start off with the definition of gastroenterology according to medicinenet.com. Gastroenterology is the medical specialty devoted to the study, diagnosis, and treatment of disorders of the digestive system. Gastroenterology is popularly and incorrectly known as GI, which stands for gastrointestinal. Gastrointestinal is referring to actually the organs themselves. Gastroenterology is the study. So there is a difference there all about the language guys and you have to be very specific and you have to be very detailed when it comes to this okay so I'm just saying <laughs> all right so for the digestive system in the ICD-10 CM book the range for the digestive system is between K00 and K95 but we can also find related diagnoses for the digestive system um, in the neoplasm section, in the signs and symptoms section, and also in the injury section. Injury section, uh, because naturally, if a patient is injured in an accident, perhaps they get stabbed or they were in a car accident or something, uh, their internal organs can be damaged. So these are other places where you could find related diagnoses. Now. What makes up the gastrointestinal system? From the National Institutes of Diabetes, Digestive and Kidney Diseases, the hollow organs that make up the GI tract are the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine, and the anus. The liver, pancreas, and gallbladder are the solid organs of the digestive system. So that is something that you really do need to know. Now, I'm going to be leaving some very helpful links down in the description box below. These are some really good articles and some are just some really good websites to better and further understand certain diagnoses like um, Crohn's disease. There is a huge selection of Crohn's disease. Now, to be really good, you have to be very detailed <laughs> and to understand fully what's happening, to fully understand a disease like Crohn's disease is really important, okay? So take the time. If you have some time, look at the Crohn's disease link that I'm leaving. I'm also going to be leaving a link for that was written by Catherine Mueller. I hope I said her name right. She's a nurse and she's got a slew of <laughs> medical coding credentials. I really like what she said. She did a whole article uh, last year about gastroenterology, billing and coding, and it's just the basics. So she's, you know, doing a very, very broad um, article about it. It's very detailed. I really like her very upfront approach. <laughs> and if you have some time, check it out. It's worth the read. Um, I'm also going to be leaving the Mayo Clinic in there as well, and it's going to be talking about cirrhosis because cirrhosis is another one that is very, very particular as well. To understand cirrhosis is to have a lot of really good knowledge and a good foundation when you are um, working in the gastro clinic, okay? So that is something that you do have to look at. Uh, as you guys know, I really love my Optum 360 ICD-10 book. This is not an ad, although I do sound like an ad right now. <laughs> This book has lots of detailed tips throughout when you're looking in the book itself, when you're looking in the, um, in the tabular section, it, it will tell you, it will give you tips. It would also tell you like what it, what, what is included, what is not included. So that is something that you should really look into if you are, if you're using another book. There are many publishers for ICD-10. However, uh, Optum 360 is the one that I trust. I will leave the link for the Optum 360 website down in the description box below. If you are brand new to medical coding and you just kind of want to get a feel, sometimes when it's the holiday, they like to have their, um, their sales. So that is a good time to get books. And even if you're getting 
just for reference, if you're getting a book from last year and it's a little cheaper, that's fine because you just want it just to sort of look at and get yourself a reference. Of course, if you are taking your exam, you want to get whatever year is uh, appropriate for your exam, whichever exam you're taking, whether you're going through the American Health Information Management Association or the American Academy of Professional Coders. Make sure you look at the year version that you need so that you can get the proper book, all right? But my book that I like is the Optin360 Expert Edition for Physicians. Now, this book, it really does say, like, it gives you a tip. And one of the tips that I wanted to share with you guys, it comes straight from this book, um, as it relates to peptic ulcer and GI bleeding documentation. So the tip that it gives in the book, it says, assign a code for with hemorrhage when a peptic ulcer and a GI bleeding, and GI bleeding are documented. The ICD-10-CM classification assumes the two are related without the provider linking the two conditions. Evidence of bleeding during a procedure is not required. So these are those little, the little things that make what we do <laughs> a little bit more detailed, okay? So there are going to be times when, yes, the provider is going to have to link these things. But if you're looking in the book and you see this, then you know you're not going to have to query the provider or you're not going to select inappropriate diagnoses because if you're not looking at it, then you may do that, okay? So, or you may leave one off. So there's always that. So pay attention to those little tips. And if gastro is your clinic right now, I would strongly recommend that you look through this section. It's not big. It really isn't compared to orthopedics from yesterday. <laughs> orthopedics is quite big, but if you are working in the gastro clinic, it's not that bad. Um, you can look through and just read the tips. So this way it can be in your mind, okay? If you're studying, that's another thing you can do as well. Uh, just take the time to read through there and look at the notes that, that are available. As far as like the other books, the other ICD-10 code publishers, I know there's other ones out there. I can't vouch for those, nor do I know how detailed they are, okay? If they have those little tips in their books or not. Um, but that is just what I would recommend. It is all about having those really good tools that you need. And for me, that I'm, I use an encoder all the time, but when you are studying, it is important to look at the book and make sure that you fully get and grasp everything that the book is trying to tell you. Because at the end of the day, the book is the one that's going to be able to lead you down the right path, okay? And then another tip that it did talk about was for bleeding ulcers, Resulting from anticoagulation therapy, code D68.32 hemorrhagic uh, disorder due to extrinsic circulating anticoagulant and an adverse effect code from the subcategory T45.5 should also be assigned. So when they are having bleeding ulcers and they're taking a a anticoagulant, it's telling you to code the D68.32 hemorrhagic disorder due to extrinsic circulating anticoagulant. Now, if you, if you don't know what extrinsic means, extrinsic is defined as not part of the essential nature of someone or something coming or operating from the outside. So basically what it's saying is this patient is taking an anticoagulant and it's causing their ulcers to bleed, right? And so then you would code that decode along with the adverse effect code, okay? So it's telling you the order. The bleed code first, followed by the, um, the adverse effect code, the T45.5 code. So those are little hints that it's telling you in the book and the tips. So those are the things that you really gotta pay attention to because to be a high caliber medical coder is to know all of these things. It's not gonna happen overnight. So if you are concentrated on one specialty, that's even better for you. If you are a swing coder where you're going to different uh, clinics all the time, maybe they have you assigned to help out uh, as, as needed in certain places or whatever, take the time to review those sections of the book, okay? And even in the CPT sections where they have in the, in the outpatient setting, where they have their, um, 
their digestive procedures, okay? <laughs> like your gallbladder removal and things like that. So you're going to have to look at those things. Uh, your lap band surgeries as well, you're going to be looking at those. So something to consider, something to think about. And hopefully this is, this is going to help you to just sort of not be overwhelmed with everything that you need to learn, okay? When it comes to the digestive system and knowing that, you know, which what where does it fall under having that good base foundation is really going to help you and like i said when you when you know like the hollow organs that make up the gi tract like the mouth the esophagus the stomach the small intestine the, low, the large intestine and the anus think about it they're hollow right there's it's just a thorough way <laughs> and then the liver the pancreas and the gallbladder are the solid organs of the digestive system so that is a good way to think about those things. Then you know in those in that section, that's where all of those particular conditions are going to be. So that's just something that I would recommend. And like I said, I have those really wonderful links and it talks about just the different breakdowns and it's particularly with Crohn's. Crohn's is one of those ones that you really have to work with your provider on clinical documentation improvement if they're not being as detailed as they should. And yes, I know it gets a little bit overwhelming and a little scary when you have to ask them questions. Um, I am going to be doing an episode this week on how to speak confidently with your providers. Hopefully that will help you. But just to sort of give you an idea when you are approaching a provider, you need to make sure that you've already done your research as much as you can to understand. And even if it means watching videos on YouTube about certain conditions, because trust me, there are breakdown videos all over the place for every condition imaginable. <laughs> so if you are having a hard time understanding something, check out YouTube first. YouTube is a wonderful learning resource of course you want to make sure that whoever you're listening to on youtube is is verifiable that it is that what they're sharing is actually the truth and what they're sharing is coming from a, a base of knowledge okay you want that and you of course you don't want to just listen to just anybody and everybody but uh, look at what they're saying. Make sure that you can look it up for yourself as well. And if they've explained it well, then you found a really good resource. Okay. So that is one of the things that I would suggest when it comes to being able to start talking with your provider so that you can work on that clinical documentation improvement, because believe it or not, every provider can benefit from some clinical documentation improvement and with conditions like Crohn's or maybe even cirrhosis that's another thing that you would really need to work with them on i mean at least that would be what i would suggest okay because it's all about growing together and you're there to support them you're there to make sure that all of their documentation is complete and sound okay <laughs> and when it comes to diseases like of the gastrointestinal right it is it is really important that all of that information is well documented and very detailed okay so that is just my thoughts for today on that <laughs> but there's lots of really interesting procedures when it comes to the GI system <laughs> uh, take the time to look at those and if you are unfamiliar check out the, the surgeries on YouTube about it there's plenty of videos about that okay so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. This one was short and sweet, just like this section. <laughs> uh, but if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I will be posting the schedule for this coming week on the videos that I will have out this week. Uh, and then I will see y'all again this coming weekend. I believe this coming weekend is going to be podiatry. I'm excited. <laughs> so I will see y'all then, but I hope y'all have a great week. And if you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. I will see y'all next time. Bye.